of this is again is just screenshots of stuff that you know never sees the light of day they're exercises in trying to get to you know i'm going to make adjustments to things i'm going to uh change like here's a perfect example this this was for uh an illustration for a, a magazine in uh sydney i think and um they'd given me four spreads to do with this magazine and and i, I was just like oh okay i don't know what i'm going to do and so a lot of these were just sort of that that inspiration hunting, that trying things to get someplace. And like, I don't know what I was thinking on the bottom right here, like pubic hair, or I, I don't know what was going on there, but of course that one never makes the cut. And eventually, you know, I, I get uh, through this navigating of ugly, I, I find uh, just the right moment, the right setting, uh, clean it up in a way where it does become something pretty. But this never would have happened if I wasn't willing to to to, tra to traverse the unknown and and make mistakes, and I've made a ton of mistakes. Um, again, these are sort of programs that have blown up, and uh, I'm just again trying things. And some of these are actually you know pretty uh, pretty good, but because I was doing programming, uh, and this was kind of funny at the time, uh, I was I was doing programming that would would generate these things and then I would output them to something that I could open in Illustrator. Uh, but oftentimes the programming was so insane that it would generate these huge things where you know, maybe the, the tan box was actually the Illustrator canvas, but I would generate these huge pieces of art that exceeded illustration, uh, Illustrator's canvas thingy. So I'd always get this dialog box like, no, Mm -mm, you can't move that. <laughs> At the time, I would I would literally try to be like, oh, the holy shit, this big blue thing just just generated, and I would I would try to move it, and I would get an error in Illustrator saying, uh, this exceeds anything that I understand, and I cannot move this. And so uh, a lot of times I, I kind of felt like, and again, <laughs> this is another example, the tan thing is the Illustrator box. <laughs> you know, and again, these sort of mistakes would happen uh, on the outside uh, that. Uh, in a lot of ways, I felt like I was a sculptor and illustrator because I would have to cut things away to try to, to, to navigate to, to pretty. So again, this was just all part of the process of trying to, whoa, no. You can't even see the canvas on that one. That one was a big, a big fuck off. Uh, <clears throat> you know, but in a lot of ways, some of these would come out quite good. And then I would try to say, well, like, okay, well, what did I do you know, in order to make that to happen. And so I would start to fine tune the programs and, and then, you know, shit like this would happen. And <laughs> this is all the bad stuff uh, that, would, uh, that would occur. Uh, and again, you know, that's, that's part of the process, right? Making these sort of mistakes and failures is what, well, now I know what not to do. Uh, that number was not a good number uh, to run. So, uh, and it's too bad these, these ones are a little uh, washed out. But um, this, it, it's, it's on black. Uh, some of the ones that I'll show here on white will maybe be a little bit better. Um, so I would even try to destroy things. Um, so this is an L system, and it's, it was come up in the 60s. It's Astrid Lindemeyer, and, and he had this thing called L systems, and, and it was used to describe fractals. And uh, it was very simple instructions like pen up, pen down, move forward, turn left, turn right. And then you'd have recursion. And, and from this, you could start to get these, these patterns. And so this is where I would start. I would start with kind of like a seed idea, and then I would try to figure out how to break it. Uh, and so. Uh, these are some some normal uh, L system patterns that you can find on the internet. This I think that one's a Sierpinski curve. Uh, this one I don't know what this one's called. This one's called a lace curve, uh, used to to make trees. And if you actually put a little bit of uh, variance in the system, you start to get things that are, are sort of organic. And it was once I got to this sort of set, I thought, well, okay, I'm gonna uh, try to. To try to break the rules and see what sort of stuff I can come up with. 
And so, again, this is kind of a process of navigating through this, this ugly crap to, to get to something that's interesting. So I actually wrote this program that would randomize the set inside the L system. And then I would set it to run, and the program would present some kind of, uh, some kind of drawing. And sometimes it would do stuff that was interesting, and other times it would just completely blow up, and it would be completely unusable. But I, I could look at the numbers and go, okay, I know not to do, to, to do that again. And through this randomization, uh, I could start to see a lot of different things um, that I could possibly uh, work with. And so I would, I would navigate these con this kind of unknown uh, to generate these things that maybe I would end up uh, using. Uh, there was a period where I really got this thing uh, to generate kind of like hipster logos. It was really fantastic. Um, so people would be like, do you do logo design? I'd be like, yes, I do. Uh, in fact, I'm ready right now. And <laughs> I'd like run a program, they'd be like, there's your logo. I really don't like that. I can give you another one. And I would just, <laughs> boom. She'd be like, you just say stop, and I will send you a bill. Uh, <laughs> got really, really good at that. Um, so again, just trying to navigate the stuff, but you know, I wasn't necessarily always looking to, um, uh, to always generate something perfect. A lot of times I would just try to generate something really shitty and then try to find parts in it. So in the bottom left, again, it's a little washed out. Uh, but it would generate these clumps, but inside these clumps I could kind of see, you know, logo patterns that I thought were interesting, and then I would try to uh, capture this to Illustrator, and then I would sort of pull them out to see some of these, uh, some of these forms. And uh, this work was really fun because, you know, the, the system was so varied, um, I really didn't have any control over the type of stuff it would uh, create, so it would, it would make these really wonderful, um, sort of architectural type pieces. And again, this is just trying to break uh, something that's solid, right? So take something that's pretty and try to mess it up. And so I would take something pretty and I would mess it up to get somewhere ugly in the hope that I would get back to pretty. Um, so th again, this was just sort of stuff that I was, I was trying. And um, some of the stuff, again, w works out. Um, so this is some earlier work um, for, for a creative review poster. So all of that sort of navigating the unknown, you know, I was getting pretty good at, at, uh, at generating these, these programs uh, to make uh, pretty stuff. And again, these are all uh, randomly generated with, with code. And of course, I could run this program again, and I would get uh, another cluster. So I really was trying to navigate through um, uh, the system so that I could get to a place that was pretty that I would want to share with people. Uh, so I did a, this is just kind of uh, some some older work that I was really again just trying to find uh, find my voice and uh, this is kind of where I was at at this time so I'll just run through uh, so here you can see I showed you some of the bad ones this one I thought was pretty pretty good so I kept it how we doing good everyone's okay uh, we're on slide 84 of 233. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get that man a Red Bull. This guy's like, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> and that's time. <laughs> what? What? Yes? Yes, I'll be at the meeting. No, I've got to go. Uh, got a meeting that just came up. <laughs> I hope that guy doesn't come back. He's like, holy fuck, i got to walk back to the front of the room, like past all those people. And what would be funny if it's like if we keep talking about him and then he comes back and he'd be like, holy shit, I've been gone for like 10 minutes. You're still talking about me? Sorry. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> so, uh, again, just, just working through. Uh, trying to get to that happy place. You know, and again, it's like this is this is what people see at the end, uh, but again, they don't see all those like wonderful mistakes, you know, that I made. Um, and so I'll I'll stop at this one because I, I thought maybe I would share uh, for people who don't program, kind of how I think about things. 
Um, so uh, last year I did this whole talk on obstructions, and uh, there's a really great film that um, I'm telling people that they have to watch, and, and it's uh, Lars von Trier's The Five Obstructions. Anyone seen it? Like three people, four people? Guess what movie you're renting tonight? Uh, there's a really great film that you should watch called The Five Obstructions, and it's a Lars von Trier film, and it's a documentary where he challenges this other filmmaker called Jurgen Leth to remake the same film five times. And each time he adheres in obstructions that just get harder and harder and harder and more mean. Um, and it's a, as a creative person, it's a really great film to watch because it just shows how obstruction can really uh, fuel the creative process. And so I thought I would show like some of the the, the things that I do to myself um, to co to come up with 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 design. And and typically the, the harder that I am on myself, usually the better the work uh, becomes. And again, it's it's just sort of this obsessive compulsive thing that I do, which is the harder the obstructions I can give myself, usually the the better the result. So here's a case where. Um, and this was all stemmed by this work that I did for, for Dead Mouse, this electronic musician. He had this LED head that I was tasked with doing animations across. But the LED matrix on the thing, the, the resolution was only 58 pixels by 49 pixels. So it was like, how do you do awesome in the size of a postage stamp? Uh, and so I thought that this was like a good design exercise to give myself, which is pick something really small, you know, and um, subdivide it in a way where um, you try to design as many things as you can as long as they adhere to that grid. Um, so this is like a 100 by 100 box, and again, I think each subdivision is 10 by 10 or whatever. And I'm trying to figure out mathematically how many different patterns I can make as, as long as they adhere to that to that grid. These are th the crazy things that I that I do to myself. Um, and then I'll take, so this is kind of where I'm at, and I'll take these like small little illustrations and I'll put them into some kind of programmatic system where I'll say, okay, um, take all these tiny small things, this is how many I can put on screen, this is where they can go, where they can't go, this is how they can rotate, this is uh, how small they can get or how big they can get, and if these two things touch, they don't like each other, push away, and if these two things do like each other, attract, and uh, put it in a kaleidoscope reflective system and you get some kind of composition. And then if I like something, like the center, I can actually pull that out and I've got an entirely new uh, um, piece of work based on uh, those simpler things. And so um, it's this idea of creating complexity from simplicity. And uh, I was doing this uh, in what's called a feedback loop, which is I would then take this new uh, piece of art and feed it right back into the same exact system again. And this could just go on infinitely and infinitely, and, and the work would get more complex and more complex. And you'd be saying, Josh, why in the fuck would you do that? Uh, and well, the reason why I do that is because I was doing illustration and I would actually write programs to generate the patterns in the fabric. So actually for these two illustrations, all of the patterns that happen in the fabric is actually generated by, uh, by a program. And uh, I, so I would get it to this point and I would say, okay, well, you know, what can I do next with this? And uh, color, as you know, is a big part of my process, so I would actually write a portion where it would scrub through these illustrations, and I would have colors off to the side in an, what's called an array, and I would say, okay, in this array, these are the colors that you can use, and find all the fills, and then randomly pick one of those colors out of the array and color the artwork. So here it would color the fills, uh, but not the strokes. And then what I would do is I would then take these assets and if we understand feedback loop, uh, what would happen if I now put those illustrations in this system? And you start to get things like, like this. Um, and so now I've got a way to generate graphic design that can present an infinite number of possibilities. So if I like this, I can capture this to Illustrator. If I don't, uh, I can run it again. And if I don't like that, I can run it again. So I can keep running this an infinite number of times, and I'll get an infinite number of compositions. And again, I'm only showing you the pretty ones. Uh, you know, 90% of the time, the work is ugly, and it doesn't quite, uh, it doesn't quite match up. But that 10%, it's trying to find that 10% where um, the structure is actually quite, uh, quite beautiful. And so uh, I got sort of obsessed with, with doing this kind of work, and um, I spent a, a, a tremendous amount of time writing a lot of code, using a lot of hand-drawn assets to try to um, 
think of these systems. So I was thinking more about code and like, okay, I'm going to write this body of code that it's able to present a certain type of aesthetic. And uh, from that, I'm hoping that I can find that 10% that beauty. Because uh, again, most of the time, it would just generate something that's just way too chaotic. And uh, I would just sort of navigate through all these uh, endless mutations. And so I could take one piece of software and I could feed it a different color set in different hand-drawn forms, and I would sort of get an infinite number of, so this is basically the same program, uh, just fed with different colors and, and different forms. And uh, at the time when I was doing this, um, and I love telling this story, this was like back in uh, 2000 or so. Uh, the, the illustration in the center, uh, when I actually output this to Illustrator, um, it's like 50,000 layers in Illustrator. Uh, and to the point where there should be a dialogue box that just says, fuck you, Josh Davis. Like, <laughs> uh, <'cause>, and <laughs> it was painful because like, you'd be like, oh, I just want to move it 10, pic 10, 10 pixels to the right. You know, select all, sh hold shift, arrow, and the dialogue box would be like, you're kidding, right? Like, you, you want me to move. 50,000 things, 10 pixels to the right. Like, really, honestly, like, go have a cup of coffee. Uh, go do something. Because um, at the time, you know, the computers, and I had a lot of RAM, and I was really uh, um, trying to, to work with the stuff, and it was, it was funny. So this was for a show, and um, so you understand, you look at this and you go, there's no way that that's 50,000 things. Well, it is because... It, a lot of it's hiding behind other work. Like, it, it would make like, you know, like a big yellow box. But behind that yellow box would be like 10,000 things. And uh, I would love this because I would send the Illustrator file to the printer. And I'd be like, there you go. <laughs> For like four color process. And I would just sit there literally like looking at my watch going, okay, 10, 9, 8, and then bring the phone would ring and they'd be like, what in the fuck are you trying to do to us? And I'd be like, what's the problem? They're like, we can't print this. Like, it, you've crashed 10 of our computers. Uh, it, not only that, like behind that yellow thing is like 10,000 things. What sadistic motherfucker does that? I'd be like, oh, I, me? Uh, so it was funny because I was confusing printers everywhere um, because they couldn't understand this idea of it being generated by a program. And a program would be like, I kind of want to put 10,000 10, things on screen and then just cover it up. Um, like a program is just going to make those decisions that you, you know, a, a normal person would, just wouldn't do. Um, and so I, I really loved these, these uh, conversations with, uh, with printers because I was making work that technically couldn't be printed. Uh, which was really fun. And the, the trick is, is I would have to render it as a Photoshop file and then just send them a 300 DPI Photoshop file. None of my Illustrator files at that time could ever be printed. But I would just send them the Illustrator file just because I loved that banter that we were going to have in a few moments. <laughs> so they're like, oh, yeah, I'll send a file over. Just, I'll speak to you in about 10 seconds. Um, so... so uh, this is this Once Upon a Forest work, and I thought uh, I would show this. Uh, Once Upon a Forest culminates into this show called Tropism uh, that I did in 2007, and this went down to Art Basel, and we did some uh, some vases and generated graphics on these vases. And, um, and, and again, this is sort of the finished final beauty, uh, but I thought I would <laughs> work through some of the stuff just to get there. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is, is that I made the card for the gallery announcing the show without ever having do, done any of the work. <laughs> it was kind of like a, hey, come to my show that I have not made yet. Uh, nothing, nothing lights a fire than, than saying you're having a body of work that you've never done a single drop of work for that body of work. Uh, so here I thought, well, this is a really great motivator. Uh, say that you're going to do a show, make the card for the show, and you actually haven't even made the show yet. Um, so that's what I did. I, I made this card that announced uh, the show that I was going to have, and I had not done any of the work uh, for the show. So uh, it meant that I was going to uh, try a lot of things. Um, uh, so I had done some Japanese fans and and uh, at the time I just thought it would be a really f funny joke to <clears throat> put a rooster in a lot of the work so that I could tell people that all my work was just filled with cock. Um, 
Oh, this is San Francisco. I feel like I'm in Utah. What the, what the fuck? I spoke in Utah. Someone had the bright idea of bringing me to Utah. I spoke at the University of Utah, and whoo, is it colorful. And the next morning, I had 10 notes slipped under my door about how offended they were, and somebody wrote an entire article in the newspaper about never bring Joshua Davis back to Utah. <laughs> Cock. <laughs> Which is another name for rooster. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It wasn't pretty. A lot of the earlier stuff I did was not, I don't know what I was thinking here. Uh, I made a, a lot of bad decisions. And then I made some somewhat workable decisions. And then I tried some other decisions. And again, this is m me trying to make a show that, you know, I, I had the card for, but I didn't even have any of the work for. Uh, so for me, this is kind of like, it's it's ugly. It's ugly trying to 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 figure this this shit out. Uh, this is what I do with color. I'm nuts. If you haven't figured it out, Josh does some really insane shit. Uh, and I go through the. This is a, such a wonderful trick uh, that I'm going to sh share it with you. Um, so I'll come up with some colors, right? Uh, and usually, like what I'll do is just come up with one color. Like I'll just come up with this color. And then in Photoshop, I'll make a new layer and just add white and, and then just keep lightening it until I get the, you know, some other colors. And so I got five colors. But then I'll take that and then I'll Gaussian blur the whole thing. And then I'll save it out as a GIF. And when you save it out as a GIF, it'll give you the color table off to the right. So I can turn one color into five colors into 50 colors. Uh, but it's all you know, colors of the same family. So I'm obsessed with, with doing this sort of color um, blurring uh, to make up colors. So you can see here, uh, here's kind of the start, and then here's the blur, and now I've got all of the in-between colors between this one and that one. Uh, so this is kind of like an obsessive thing that I do with, uh, with color. And again, so I, I figured out like, okay, the, tro the tropism work, like I definitely knew what the colors were gonna be, and, and it was gonna be this. Uh, and then, again, I, I just started going through trying to figure out, navigate through all of this random crap t to get to pretty. And uh, this is how it started. This tropism show started with some of these like really early files. Uh, and this was just a bad decision. Uh, but again, it's, this stuff informs like what not to do. And uh, for me, it, it kind of feels like sculpture. Like I'm sculpting this code, I'm sculpting this process. To, to, to get somewhere that's, uh, that's interesting. And so um, here's me just slowly building this thing up um, to get it to a point where I thought, well, okay, this, this is starting to be something that maybe I can, I can work with. Uh, and that, that direction isn't always positive. Sometimes you, you freak out and, and, and you go backwards and be like, oh, no, that's okay, no. We were going forward, and now you've made a mistake again. So that self-editing is, is something that I'm, I'm constantly doing. And uh, again, eventually this stuff makes it into Illustrator, and, and uh, this is just an output uh, to PostScript. And again, there are parts of this that looks good, but really there's, uh, there's some harmony that's, that's missing here. And so uh, I'm just trying to find, get to that place where like, OK, then now that's something that maybe I can, uh, I can do some work with. And so in the end, uh, I do get the show done. And these are some of the outputs from that show. And, and some are a little better uh, than others. Um, the one on the right here, I'm not too, that's the filler one. Like, you know, we need you to do six prints. And that's kind of the, the track on the album that I, that's not very good, that no one can dance to. Uh, but some of these are really, really fun. Uh, I love showing this piece because uh, I really like this guy right here who's so excited that he made it into the print. He's like, oh. Does everybody see him? He's like, I can't believe I made it in the illustration. <laughs> and every time I see that piece, we talk. Every time I open up that piece, I'm like, oh my God, you're still here. He's like, I'm still here. <laughs> So great. I like him. 
steps. I'm still on the left. We see you. Yeah. Um, but even if you get to someplace good, you're going to fuck up and do something stupid. Uh, and <laughs> this was for a spicy trail mix in Australia that really liked that Once Upon a Forest work and decided they wanted to wrap a car in. And I said, yes, I will take your money for your trail mix. And l let's just forget that we ever saw this slide. Uh, moving, moving right along. Um, so let's talk about uh, one other thing here, which uh, this is something that I, I've talked about over the, the past year or so, and, and uh, it was this idea of escaping success. And um, uh, this seems like a really kind of weird thing to talk about. Um, and when I asked a couple of my peers, like, yeah, I think I want to talk about escaping success. And they're like, well, that's horrible. That's a terrible thing to talk about because people in the audience are trying to find success and you're trying to tell them to walk away from it. Um, but I think 